you guys noticed the trend, and, and don't give away too much because we're going to do it later on in the RBI at the end of the show, where despite the down numbers not moving a lot, investors made some pretty big shifts internally. Yeah, that's right, Brian. So on one hand, it was a pretty you know, marginal day in the markets, relatively flat. Um, but however, a big divergence occurred between growth and value stocks. In fact, one of the greatest that we've seen since going back to 2009. Uh, and so investors will be looking ahead to see, is this just a one-day trend? Or are we actually going to see signs of a true rotation out of the high-flying growth of momentum stocks toward value? Well, what do you think? I mean, based on what you saw yesterday, was this just kind of a one-day wonder where the bottom companies, the underperformers, outperformed? Do you think that can continue based on what you're seeing your clients doing? Yeah, so we obviously saw the big rotation from a money movement perspective, but it feels to me more like short covering. Um, although this year we know growth stocks have had tremendous outperformance. In fact, they have a tremendous outperformance over five years, 10 years, 20 years. Um, the real Everybody here, loves the FANG stocks, Of course, Dave. of course, why not? They're growing earnings. They have high-quality balance sheets, value stocks beaten up, difficult to find anything to like about them. What's really important here, it, you noted it earlier, it's the move in rates. Of course, we had an inversion in the yield curve for all of five days at the end of August. But if you were on vacation, came back in September, it's like it didn't happen. Now we're seeing a re-steepening of the yield curve. And I think that's what this move is more about. It's actually more about a potential normalization of interest rates. Although, look at those PPI numbers out of China mm -hmm. last night. It doesn't really tell you inflation's back. Can you define normalization of interest rates right now, Dave? Because if you know what normal is in the bond market, you are a much smarter man than I am. I think I'd be a lot smarter than, than uh, much people out there are not saying I am. The point is, it's difficult to identify what's really the driver here. Inflation expectations continue to go down. That's what the Federal Reserve, that's what the ECB and everyone is worried about. Because, of course, we'll get numbers uh, out of the U.S. for CPI and PPI this week. Um, but the question really becomes is, does inversion just stick around for five days or does it go for 30 days? That 30-day signal is more of the concern. Yeah, it's, it's not that, the, and, you know, and again, with all due respect to other segments on, the, on this fine network, there was a, once one day it inverted and it was like, okay, there's your recession signal. History says it's not if it inverts, it's how long it stays inverted. And five days, historically... That doesn't do exactly. That doesn't do it for it. Now, doesn't mean ignore it. I think that's the point. But sure. but it could you, happen again, or it could be right there. And if we're one basis or two basis points off, does that really matter? No, that's not the point. What matters here is the divergence that we're seeing in economic signals, and that's really what drove people uh, to 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 see the inversion as an issue because it came with right around the heels of a poor manufacturing number. But then a couple days later, services number beats the upside. City Economic Surprise Index then moves into positive. We are in a, a kind of a mixed up environment. It's difficult to understand what actually is going to be what the next month looks like because there's so much uncertainty out there still. The other trend besides a sort of one day rotation, we'll see if it's a rotation or just a one day move in short covering, like you said, is that people, this, this huge run in gold miners this year to the upside, you're starting to see some of your clients make some bets against gold miners. Here's what's really interesting about gold miners. So it's been an area that was out of favor. We have uh, leveraging inverse ETFs that allow traders uh, to take amplified bets on those exposures. We're seeing volume increase on both sides, so the bull and the bear. However, we're seeing major inflows into the bearish fund and outflows from the bull fund. And what mm. that tells us is that although we know prices have rallied, there's a lot of skepticism there. Because if you're actually putting your money on a bet against gold miners and you're actually shorting the other side, um, and in a leveraged way, you have to have some conviction to do that. So it's yeah. something we're keeping an eye on to see is, is this rally actually short-lived? And in the last couple of days, um, some of those bets might turn out to be right. They certainly might be. Or, or people that are long gold miners could be using your products as a hedge Very good against point. the gains they've already made. Exactly. That's a great yeah. point because that's how we, we see these products used uh, on the flip side as well. Um, and if we continue to see that trend play out, um, then that will tell us actually, you know, maybe this move in, in, in rates actually is a real thing. Well, one, day does not a, one day does not a trend make.